Hi everybody, this is Hanna Rivas here at Team Elite where we inspire you to dream big and go bold. This is our Think and Grow Rich series and today I'm here with Vahid Chitsas. Hi Vahid. Hi Hanna, good to see you. Thank you for being with me today. Guys, today we're going to talk about the 30 major causes of failure from the Think and Grow Rich book. I'm talking to you Vahid because we've been studying this for such a long time. You have so much experience with this book. I know that it is your favorite book. So definitely, I think you are the person to be talking to about this this topic. <laughs> you got it. I mean, you got to think about it. Whenever we go, whenever, as far as business owners and entrepreneurs goes, you want to know where the obstacles are going to be. Now, Napoleon Hill, obviously, he took his time mm -hmm. and he went around the country interviewing so many business owners. I think somewhere in his books, he said 26,000. Wow. Somewhere else is recorded that he's interviewed 36,000 individuals. So we're not going to be picky on the number. We just know it's been more than 1,000 people, right? Mm -hmm. So if you interview 1,000 people, majority of them being business and not being, you'll know some traits that are very very common denominator mm -hmm. among the individuals that become successful and the ones that don't become successful now being successful and not successful we're not talking about you being a good person or a bad person mm -hmm. we're just talking about as far as what our society considers being success you can provide for your family you you have enough money your business is flourishing you're helping a lot of you know people in your community so that kind of success we're talking about okay. so napoleon here write down you know he he organized it for us he wrote down the top 30. I don't think we're going to be able to do all 30 right. in one video. So we're going to divide it up in like maybe like three sections. Sounds so let's good. go maybe one by one through all the first 10. Mm -hmm. And then if, you know, I can put my two cents into it to, to see which ones you need to watch out for, which are the, you got to prioritize it, especially for business owners and entrepreneurs and individuals, you know, that are out there trying to build their business and be successful in life. I agree. So let's get into this, guys. The first one, unfavorable hereditary background. It says, if you have some kind of deficiency of brain power because of a disability or some sort, there's not much you can do about it. This is the only one of the 30 causes of failure that cannot be easily corrected. So that's, it. I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, there's not, there's not much, that, that much correction. Now, I have seen people with disabilities mm -hmm. really work on their strengths and for, forget about their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So you can, everything is a muscle. So you can train your muscles to be able to do more. And that includes your brain also too. So mm -hmm. there, there are a few... I have yet to meet anybody that, that, that stopped them from being successful. Okay. But I'm pretty sure they are because Napoleon Hill put it number one. Mm -hmm. Awesome, guys. So number two is lack of a well-defined purpose in life. It says, if you don't have some kind of goal that you're aiming for, how are you supposed to achieve anything or therefore be successful? Have a clear, defined goal that you want to achieve and know why you are working to reach it. Exactly. And that's why as you start getting into the book, especially chapter, you know, the first principle being desire, mm -hmm. it talks about it at the end of it. You have to be specific with your goal. You got to put a deadline on it and you got to write it down. I mean, we already, you know, we're going to do a video that talks about all the six steps that you need to do to be able to write down your goals. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want and how you're going to achieve that? So mm -hmm. uh, I believe now Napoleon is getting serious about the the, the 30 items that he's going to share with you guys. So if you don't have a goal, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Just merely wishing for it, I want to buy a big house. That absolutely doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I want to buy a nice car. Nothing. I want to own a business. Nothing. You got to be very, very specific and that's what he's trying to uh, imply over here. I agree. Number three, lack of ambition to aim above mediocrity. People who, are, who don't want to get ahead in life can never be successful. This is when you just don't want to even try to improve your life and would rather stay at a mediocre level. I doubt most people actually intend to stay mediocre their entire lives. What, what he's talking about over here is that, think about it. I, I come across a lot of people these days that they're content with what they got. Yes. If they're making 3000 5000 10000 it doesn't matter the amount. They, they want to maintain. And one thing that I know in business, if you, the minute you start maintaining, that's the minute you're going downhill. Mm -hmm. You always got to be improving. Now, the improvement doesn't have to be drastic. You could improve little by little. But, I mean, think about it. Uh, back in the days, we used to do uh, blackberries. Mm -hmm. Where the bla where's blackberry phone? Nope. I, I loved it. I was a loyal client for like six, seven years. Mm -hmm. I had all the first black. I mean, I know a lot of you guys may not remember BlackBerry, you might be too young, but 
I mean, it was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It revolutionized, you know, the way we were texting and the speed of it and everything yeah. else. But guess what I ended up doing? Most companies, they don't want to be aggressive. They don't have the ambition. And the person leading the company is not ambitious to be able to do what? Stay ahead of the game. Yeah. Just like Grant Cardone says, if you're not the first, you're last. Yeah. So if you're not trying to improve in your field, you don't have to do it in every field. As long as in your field, you're trying to improve, you got that. Now, what field we're talking about? I would say in my life, I would want to increase my income by at least outpacing the inflation. Yeah. So every year, I want about 10 to 12% more to just cover the extra taxes and extra inflation that's happening. I agree. But if you don't have that ambition, you really don't want to improve your life, which a lot of people don't. I mean, that's one of the causes of failure. Wow. Now, the next one is number four, insufficient education. It says, a lack of the right education can be overcome with ease. In Thinking Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill explains that it is not so much the most highly educated people in school that are the most successful, but the ones who self-educate themselves. That's a, that's a big topic. Um, I don't think I can elaborate on this because I might have a fight with my wife. Nah. Uh, I might get into trouble with that, but uh, you, have to, you have to differentiate this, Hannah. Are we talking about the formal education where the majority of our society knows about? Is that what we're talking about? Are we talking about going to UCLA, USC, getting an MBA degree, this, this? Are we talking about that? Mm -hmm. But Napoleon Hill is talking about self-education, mm -hmm. right? I don't know what the percentage is, but I know uh, they did a study. I was reading it. Uh, it was like a couple of months ago. Like how many percent? Like 40, I want to say, percent of billionaires didn't even finish college. Yeah. Like it's ridiculous. Like how many, they did a percentage of, of what it was, and I'm pretty sure there's a lot that went to school and mm -hmm. they got to school. But what he's trying to say over here is this: in my opinion, if you want to be a good mechanic, if you tell me I went to schooling for ten years with it, I'm probably not going to trust my car with you. Mm. But if you tell me I've been fixing engines for past ten years, hands on in the shop, I'm probably going to trust you and say, you know what, this guy knows what he's doing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. If if your hairstylist says I went to schooling to cut hair for eleven years, but you're my first haircut, <laughs> uh, no thanks. Yeah, he'd be okay. like, no way. So what he's what he's trying to talk about is like, it's talking about getting skills in your right field that you're in, mm -hmm. getting hands on experience. And some of that might be like a form more education, right? Some of it might have to do with textbook. I mean, you can't be a doctor without going to school. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just doesn't happen, right? You got to read that. But a lot of it, which is residency, you got to go and get hands-on experience. Yeah. So it doesn't necessarily mean just because you, don't, you didn't get the formal education from schooling, that will hinder you from you being successful. Yes, true. So you can't do it based on learning skills. Mm -hmm. It's very important, I think. So number five is lack of self-discipline. Let's talk about that. Uh, lack of self-discipline, what, what does that mean to you? I mean, it could be a lot. Uh, discipline comes in many, many different forms. Mm. It comes uh, physical discipline, which a lot of people associate discipline with physically. Yes. Discipline, going to gym on time, doing this, getting to your work on time, opening your business on time, all that, that that's discipline. Then there's the emotional discipline that we have, right? Mm -hmm. Then there's the, you know, mental, you know, discipline that you got to have. You know, there's so many different types of uh, business mentality that you have. You got to have discipline in that. There's a lot of them. But the main one is actual physical discipline. Mm -hmm. You actually showing up, mm -hmm. which you'll be surprised. A lot of times people don't show up. Yeah. I mean, you could beat a lot of people in business as long as you show up to your business every day. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to own an auto repair shop for a long time, and I noticed a lot of people on Saturdays that would lack. Mm -hmm. I started opening up my shop on Sundays too. Business started flourishing. We were doing a lot of business. That was one of the dis disciplines that I needed to get. Mm -hmm. Finding out the right people to run the shop and being able to show up. And that's the same thing with everything else. I believe you going and getting, you know, in, in fitness, you getting in shape, a lot of it has to do with what? Just showing up. Yeah. As long as you show up, you beat a lot of people. So discipline is, uh, discipline is doing things that you don't like to do. Hmm. But you know it's necessary for you to succeed. You, you need to do that. And this is emotional and, and physical, physical discipline. Okay. So they both come in hand in hand. Got they it. go to hand in hand. Wow. Okay. Beautiful. Seven uh, is unfavorable environmental influences during childhood. So can that mean like how you were brought up? You know, your education, everything, is that just packaged in everything? What does that mean? 
you and I have seen a lot of people grow up in the right, wrong neighborhood mm -hmm. and become successful. And you also have seen a lot of people grow up in the right neighborhood and they become average. nothing, just yeah. normal, average. And they're still good people. They still, you know, they're 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 making a living, but they don't get that success that you and I are talking about, right? Mm -hmm. They don't get to that level. But in my opinion, uh, raising your children and the environment you're in is very important. I mean, think about it. You're probably the average of the top five people that you hang out with. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So that happens a lot. If your friends are all entrepreneur, business owners, thinking about growth, they're ambitious, they got their discipline to get all that, that's going to rub off on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. I don't think anybody ever goes for their first cigarette. I don't think they walk into 7-Eleven and buy a pack of cigarettes. No. I think the way you start smoking is somebody's next to you, one of your friends, or you put yourself in an environment like that, that someone, you know, offers you a cigarette and you smoke, and then after that you went to 7-Eleven and you buy yourself, mm -hmm. right? Now, that's a bad example of like you doing bad things. Cigarette may not be a good thing for your yeah. health, right? But it also could work. The same thing could work for the opposite, mm -hmm. for positive. If your friends are in school and they're being, you know, getting good grades and everything else, you try to compete. They try to help you. You're in. The, you're, you're surrounding yourself with good people mm -hmm. that are good in school. Guess what's going to? I mean, you're going to end up being like that. Yeah. So. Some of it has to do with individuals. Now, if you're young, you don't know, then that, that responsibility falls on the parents. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of times parents want their kids to go to private school, this, that, tutoring, all that. That helps. That's good. But it's not merely as much as you letting the children, when they're growing up, why you're doing that. Mm -hmm. Not just putting them in a private school. Not just them saying, okay, private school, you know, is good or bad. No, it's because the surrounding of themselves when you surround yourself with successful people or people that you and I think that are going on the right path, that's definitely going to influence you mm -hmm. and I. So, wow. yeah. surround yourself with successful people. Chances are it will rub off on you. Good or bad. Good or oh, bad. Man. Right. <laughs> Number eight is procrastination. Now it says oh. here, this is definitely one of the biggest causes of failure. It's actually one of the, mo the ones uh, that I struggle with the most starting out as an entrepreneur. Can we talk about procrastination? Yeah. That's why Napoleon Hill, uh, the, you know, one of the first principles talks about desire and he talks about the goal and it says that you got to give it a deadline. You got to give it a time frame. If not, what happens? We all know. We all procrastinate. Mm -hmm. I think it's in our nature that yes. we procrastinate. We're lazy. Right? We're just, ev everybody's lazy, right? Yeah. I'm probably the laziest guy on the planet. Mm -hmm. If you let me sleep, I probably sleep for like days on and on and on. I mean, I, 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 I can sleep, right? <laughs> but guess what I need to do? I need to get my emotional right, the discipline right, and at the same time, I know that I got certain goals and deadlines mm -hmm. as far as time goes that I need to deliver on, and I know other people are depending on me to deliver on that. Yes. So that kind of helps you with not procrastinating. But it's, it's up to us where we got to catch it fast, mm -hmm. where you got to go, okay, I'm procrastinating about do this, I better move myself into a direction. That, so just kind of like not forcing yourself, but pushing yourself to just get into that zone and get it done with. And you mm -hmm. feel good when you get it done. Yeah. I mean, okay. um, we, there, there's so many books about that, that subject where you could do it. So you could create a checklist, mm -hmm. which has got date and time on it, where you check it off as you do. I like that plan. Kind of, kind of yeah. makes, makes you feel good that, okay, you know, I went through this. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. I got one thing done on my list. I like that. It's definitely, it's definitely something I struggle with and I'm working on that too. Right. Number nine is lack of persistence. It says, it's a lot easier to start something than it is to finish it. Especially in, in entrepreneurship, people tend to be excited about getting started, but then quit at the first time, uh, sign of defeat. What ends up happening is being an entrepreneur is not an overnight thing. Mm -hmm. It's not a one year, two year. You gotta, if you want to build a business, it's got to be over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing it over a period of time, you can't lose excitement. And you, you just can't. There are challenges in life. You just got to go through them. Now, the challenges come, right? I, that's why I say challenge, not problems. They're all challenges because they can be overcome, yes. right? So there are a lot of challenges when you're trying to build a business, right? You and I need to seek expert counsel on that and be also be persistent when persistent was is doing it over and over practicing the wrong thing is not going to make it perfect yes practicing the right material is going to get you there so persistency is that you just you know you keep improving on the last time that you did you keep improving and the next thing you know out of that you create so much other things that you're like wow so 
you just you just find many ways of not being able to do it to get to the result that you want. Mm -hmm. So it's process of elimination, if you ask me. You just eliminate things that don't work. So eventually, you're gonna get to things that do work. Yeah. So you get to work. That's that's, that's, what, that's what I heard right now. <laughs> Number ten, finally, is that negative personality. You oh. must attract people to you with oh. your personality, not repel them. Oh my God! Just there's nothing that I resist more than negative people. Mm. Is it? Now, there's a difference between being realistic, talking about realistic, like, okay, you know, I, I just opened my business, mm, you know, me thinking that I'm not going to be a million in the first year is not a negative thought, yeah. right? That's, that's just me being realistic, okay? My business, I need certain amount of products, certain amount of inventory, I got to be able to sell it like this, I got to be able to distribute it like this, okay, I'm calculating within the first two years, I should be here. So for me to set a goal at a million, yeah, I want to go overboard and just stretch myself a little bit, but for me to say I want to make $10 million first year, you're like, come on. Yeah. Like, I mean, so being realistic is not what I thought. But being negative, oh, economy is bad. Like somebody told me the other day, mm -hmm. you know, like we're in 2018, um, we have a president that might be a little bit whacked out in the head, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's uh, he does a little bit of a crazy things, right? But we try not to get involved with politics. But what does the president have to do with your business? Yes. Yeah, I understand. In the whole, you know, bigger picture, he might be doing some crazy stuff with China and everything else. But that's you entrepreneurship. That's your business. You better start thinking. What if this happens? Mm -hmm. Put plans in place that if in case he does something crazy, what can he do? Yeah. How can you overcome that? So you got to plan on it. And no president is going to retire you. No president is going to come give their money to you. Mm -hmm. So what they do is their business is not on my business, yeah. right? I want to focus on my business. So a lot of times, you know, challenges come and then we give up too fast. So don't do that. You know, it's okay to have realistic thoughts, but don't be negative. If you keep a positive mentality, you're going to attract positive people. And a lot of times I have gone through that myself where the situation was completely negative. But I, I catch myself fast. Now, I'll tell you a secret on it. It used to be that I used to catch myself maybe in like maybe a day. Mm -hmm. So I'd be in that mode, negative mode and everything else, disappointment, all that stuff, for like a day. Now, that day has shrunk for me. Now I can catch myself in like 20 seconds. Hmm. Well, I'm like, that was negative. Don't have those thoughts. That's not going to be useful. We can't talk about that. Let's talk about something positive. How we're going to fix it, how we're going to improve on it. So imagine from 24 hours being in that negative mindset versus 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a, it's, a, it's a work in progress. You got to give it time a little by little. Now, what would you suggest for the audience to start working on that? You're saying you can do it in 20 seconds now. Is it just having it on your mind? Like when you Constant. wake up, like what, what Listen, do you do? Listen, I have never had a negative thought that actually served me and made me money. Mm. So why, why would I want to get pay attention to it? I don't want to pay attention to it. Now, some people are able to put it in a box and put it aside, right? Some people are not able to do that. You got to start learning that. A lot of emotional things happen in our business, right? Where you might, it's a temporary defeat, right? You just got to put it in a box, put it aside. We'll address it later on if you need to. But we need to move on, mm -hmm. right? Especially like, for example, I don't let traffic get to me. I am prepared in all shapes and forms for me to be able to handle traffic. I have snack with me, I have water with me, I have drinks with me, I have sodas with me, I have cookies with me, I have uh, Persian seeds with me, Thanks. I have that in my car. So if I'm traveling, I'm going somewhere where it takes me an hour and a half, I'm not going to get frustrated. Because yeah. if I don't have water or drink, guess what, I'm going to get frustrated. So I'm going to do what? I'm going to have my water, I'm going to have my Diet Coke ready, mm -hmm. good to go. So I have that. Then, my phone, I got a bunch of audios in it. I know YouTube is there, I just plug it in, just start playing it, or I can be on my phone, I got my wireless connection, Bluetooth, to start talking on my phone, talk mm -hmm. to positive people, and then next thing you know, I've been in the car for an hour, but I was more productive in my car being an hour, yeah. a negative thing turned into a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Now I've talked to a few people, a few of my agents, we planned it, strategies, all that. That was a negative situation, mm -hmm. turned into positive. Nice. Now you could start doing little by little. Now. If your husband or wife is negative and you have to be in the same room all the time, that, that sometimes is difficult. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to handle that. So uh, you want to surround yourself with positive people. That's why I recommend individuals, if, if they're going to go through thinking, grow rich, 
Napoleon Hill training, mm -hmm. I highly recommend you do it as a family. Mm -hmm. If you're a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband or wife yeah. or whatever it is, just go together or get a group together. Get a bunch of your friends together, get a bunch of business associates together, get a bunch of your, your, your teammates together, do it as a group where everybody's giving positive, t you know, positive feedback to each yeah. other. And that builds up support system. Mm -hmm. Maybe I am negative about something, right? But if I know you're positive and I call you, I don't even have to tell you about my challenge. Just you being positive, me talking to you gives me positive feedback. Wow. Well, I think that's a great way to wrap it up, guys. You actually have some tangible things that you can do today to start having a better mindset. These are just the first 10. We're going to have two more of these to go through all the 30. Um, and we look forward to the next one with you guys. And I hope if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We are on YouTube, all the social media. TeamEliteZone.com. TeamEliteZone.com. Don't forget it. We're right here, ready to help you guys. And we'll see you on the next one. All right, take care.